again and welcome to God's Kitchen Down Under where we feed the inner and outer man. Yummy recipes for the outer man which is our body and the word of God for our inner man which is our spirit. And today we're going to continue on the Christmas trend. So last week there was some Christmas recipes and today I'm going to be very adventurous and make some individual plum puddings. So first of all there is a little bit of preparation in this but there, it sounds like a fairly simple recipe. I haven't tried it before. But first of all I'll just run through the ingredients. So we, here we have 750 grams of dried fruit. I just bought um, fairly cheap dried fruit but I think there's all different types. Um, and into that dried fruit I've added a third of a cup of brandy and a third of a cup of fresh squeezed orange juice. So before they, um, the liquid was poured onto the dried fruit, I just put those two, the brandy and the orange juice on the stove in a small saucepan, gave it a bit of a stir and just heated it through. Once it was heated through and mixed, I poured it onto the dried fruit and just gave it a really good mix just to make sure all that um, liquid, the orange juice and the brandy got into all of the fruit. After that, the fruit was just left for 30 minutes to soak. So that's all been done. Here I have 200 grams of butter and two thirds of a cup of brown sugar, which I'm going to beat, two eggs, and here we have three quarters of a cup of plain flour and also added to that is two teaspoons of mixed spice. Here we have one, one and a half cups of day old bread that has been processed, so it's bread crumbs basically. And here we have 100 grams of good quality dark chocolate which has been grated. So that's going in as well. The other thing that I have already done is I melted some butter and I've just brushed eight patty pans because I'm actually going to make them in here because they are individual plum puddings so therefore just uh, for one person and then they can be given as gifts. And these little bits of baking paper are just to put on top of each uh, plum pudding before they go into the oven. So let's get started. So we've got our fruit here ready. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to beat the butter and sugar till it's nice and creamy. So we'll just do that now. So the butter was already at room temperature. It had been at room temperature probably for a couple of hours and because it's a nice hot day it's melted and therefore it mixes up a lot quicker once it's been at room temperature for a while. So what I'm going to do now is add our eggs. So I will just do that one at a time. So we'll just put one egg in and we'll give it a beat. just add them one at a time so that they can be um, beaten in just one at a time and mixed nicely together. Okay, so we'll just beat in our second egg. So there we have both of our eggs beaten in. So we've, had, we've got our brown sugar, our butter and our eggs beaten in. So now in goes our flour. So it's three quarters of a cup of uh, plain flour and two teaspoons of mixed spice and this has been sifted as well. So we'll give our flour and spice a good stir, get all around those edges so that we've got all of our mixture in there and then we're going to put in our bread crumbs. So that's our one and a half cups of day old bread processed into crumbs. So we give that a stir as well and then 
I'll follow that with the 100 grams of dark chocolate. So this is a good quality dark chocolate. It didn't seem like a lot, but once it's grated, it actually looks like quite a large amount. So we're going to mix in the grated chocolate. So there's quite a nice amount of chocolate in these puddings and lots of dried fruit. So we'll give that a good stir. You can see it all going chocolatey colour. And now it's time for the fruit to go in. So let's pour in our fruit, remembering that our fruit has been soaked with that mixture of brandy and fresh squeezed orange juice. Okay, smells pretty good. Not that I like brandy, but it does smell pretty good. So as you can see, it's going to be a bit of hard elbow work to try and stir all this in together. But we've got a lot of um, moisture. It doesn't seem like a lot of liquid because all up there was only two thirds of a cup. And that's the combination of the juice and the brandy. But it certainly does give the dried fruit a lot of wetness. So the mixture, after it was very dry with those bread crumbs and the flour, it's now quite moist. So I think that's looking pretty good. So as you can see, we've got all our ingredients mixed in there. And I think we're ready to put them into the patty pans. In go our Christmas puddings into the patty pans. I'll just bring that round here. So I'm just going to try and do them as evenly as possible, obviously. The recipe said eight patty pans. Um, I don't know, maybe mine are a little bit smaller than the recipe calls for, in which case I might need to do some extra ones. Okay. So as you can see, we've got all our Christmas puddings in the patty pans. So these are going to be fairly small because obviously there's extra ones there than what the recipe said. Just pat it down gently with the back of the spoon just to give a little bit of um, smoothness to them so they're not too rough on the top. And I've got my little pieces of baking paper here that go on the top of each one. So that might help to just keep them um, probably so they don't get as dry on top. But I haven't got enough because I was only planning to do eight. So we'll just have to do two without the baking paper on the top. There we go. So there we go. There we have our individual Christmas puddings and they're all ready to go in the oven. And I have a 150 degree centigrade oven um, heating up that's been heating up for a while so that means that the oven is ready now it would be up to that temperature and we'll put our plum puddings oh they're quite heavy okay so they go in there for about 35 to 40 minutes so I'll set the timer and we'll come back when it's time to take them out so while our Christmas puddings are cooking in the oven, because they'll be taking around about 35 minutes, we're going to feed the inner man, which is our spirit, with the word of God. And you may remember last time, um, the scripture verse uh, was from Matthew, and it was where the angel was speaking to Joseph, telling Joseph that uh, Mary was pregnant, but he was to marry her anyway, and not divorce her quietly. And also there was the prophecy from Isaiah, which Isaiah prophesied 700 years before Jesus was born. So the scripture today comes from Luke chapter 1, verses 34 to 38. And this is just after the angel of the Lord has told Mary that she will also be pregnant. It says, Then Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I do not know a man? 
And the angel answered and said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the highest will overshadow you. Therefore, also, that Holy One is to be born, will be called the Son of God. Now, indeed, the angel went on to Mary, Elizabeth, your relative, has also conceived a son in her old age. And this is now the sixth month for her, who was called barren. For with God, nothing will be impossible. Then Mary said, Behold the maidservant of the Lord. Let it be to me according to your word. And the angel departed from her. So there's three things I'd like to bring out of this reading. First of all, where it says, For with God nothing will be impossible. And that is true today just as it was true over 2,000 years ago when Mary conceived Jesus of the Holy Spirit and when Elizabeth conceived. There's two miracles in this very short passage. One, that Elizabeth became pregnant in her old age and when she had been declared barren because obviously she was of such an age that it was uh, naturally too late uh, to bear children and because of that they had just assumed she was barren and there was no IVF in those days. So the first miracle is that Elizabeth became pregnant in her old age and of course the second miracle which is very well known is that Mary became pregnant by the Holy Spirit. So let that be an encouragement to you today that nothing is impossible with God. Amen. Once your puddings are cooked and um, cooled down, you can put them in the freezer so that you can just pull them out on Christmas Day. And also, if you want to, you can package them as gifts. So here's just a couple that I have packaged. And underneath, you will also find some other ideas for serving and for wrapping as gifts. And the other thing you'll find below is a recipe for a really easy uh, brandy cream that you can serve uh, with your Christmas puddings. So thank you for joining me on God's Kitchen Down Under. And I'll look forward to sharing another Christmas recipe with you next time. God bless you.